Today, in the studio, we go one-on-one -on -one with Marion Blakey, the president and CEO of the Aerospace Industries Association. Prior to her tenure at AIA, Marion has held a series of high-level government executive positions, uh, including uh, positions in the Department of Transportation, uh, the chairmanship of the NTSB, and as many of our uh, viewers will know, a five-year term or sentence, as the case may be, as administrator of the FAA. Marion, thank you very much for joining us. I'm delighted to be here, Todd. Thank you for asking me. Now, uh, I want to talk about sequestration, but before we do that, just to set the table, can you talk a little bit about the membership of AIA, the defense side, as well as the commercial side, and the space component? Absolutely, because we're very proud of the fact that we have more than 350 member companies who represent really everything in the defense aerospace arena. Uh, we're talking about, of course, on the defense side, companies like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, which spans, of course, from military into the commercial side, where we have companies like Embraer, for example, and then space, where we have companies like SpaceX, Sierra Nevada, and also some of the big guys who also have worked in that arena and helped NASA for years. So it's a great group of CEOs that come together to really set the policy for our industry. So on sequestration, your membership really is sort of at ground zero of that because if sequestration really kicks in, or the full effect of it were to kick in, a trillion dollars, you know, 10 years, split evenly between defense and non-defense, both sides of your membership get hit very hard in that. AIA has been out front for months on this issue, pounding away, and you've been a real leader in trying to educate policymakers about the impact of sequestration. Can you talk a little bit about, first on the defense and military side, what the impact of sequestration would be? Sure, because I'll tell you, it is really something that I think all of us as Americans, as citizens, should be deeply worried about because it is going to undermine our national security if, in fact, this goes through. This isn't just my opinion. It's the opinion of two secretaries of defense. Secretary Panetta, for example, has said it would be devastating. Uh, it throws off entirely the new national strategy that he and the president rolled out back in February. Can't execute on that if we go into this kind of really enormous cuts to defense. It's tough for defense, too, because appropriately they have decided in the White House that the military uh, personnel accounts will be exempt. So what that does mean is that the cuts go very heavily against R&D, against procurement, against modernizing equipment that's been worn out in Iraq and Afghanistan and trying to bring the technology that has been so effective on the battlefield up to speed and hopefully advancing because that's always what gives the United States its edge is our technology that's out there. When you think about Osama bin Laden and catching that uh, notorious criminal, it really was technology that enabled the SEALs to do their job. So you're going to see, I think, some real setbacks there uh, if, in fact, we see sequestration go into effect. Um, on the commercial side, you mentioned Boeing, uh, Embraer, Raytheon. Uh, you have a large membership that is very focused on the commercial uh, civil aviation side as well. Uh, you held an event in the summer to really try and highlight the impacts on commercial aviation, the job creation in that part of the economy. Talk a little bit about that. In fact, we thought it was important to do a solid analysis by a third party. We, AIA is very big on independent uh, studies, economic analysis, et cetera, because we believe the facts really should dr drive the debate. We looked at the question of what a approximately a billion dollar cut to the FAA's budget was going to be. And a group called eConsult ran all the numbers, and it's pretty scary. Uh, we're talking about the layoff of about 1,500 controllers. We're talking about a major setback to the investment accounts, which is where the next generation air transportation, air traffic system is being funded. 
We're talking about, therefore, a reduction in schedule. A lot of small airports affected by this. And what to do, of course, is something that the FAA is struggling mightily with right now. And they're very worried about it. Um, Acting uh, Administrator Huerta has come out and said that it's going to affect the FAA in a very fundamental way. And it will have lasting effects because when you throw off investment programs like NextGen, it's not just this year, it's for years to come. When you really sort of you have some skin in the game, as the former administrator, you spent years pushing and pushing to get NextGen operational. And this, in your opinion, would be a significant setback to that. It would, because one of the things we all know is that NextGen is going to enable a much more efficient system. That means fuel economy. That means the ability to put more flights on optimal trajectories. It means getting the delays that we have worried about, and we'll see again, down to the point that we don't think of the system as having the bottlenecks that it does today. But in point of fact, uh, if we throw that off, we're talking about a loss of about $30 billion of advantage when NextGen is fully implemented. And this is just throwing that program completely off track if, in fact, the sequestration cuts go through in January. Now, for uh, our airport members uh, that are part of AAAE, there's, there maybe is a slight sense, false sense of security with the AIP program being protected through a quirk of the budgetary process, that that funding, the federal construction funding, is protected. But as you point out, the operations account is not protected, and the controllers are facing cuts, as you note, and that could, in fact, have significant impact for service throughout the country. I think that's exactly right. It's certainly a good thing that the AIP funds are protected. The problem, though, from an airport standpoint is that if, in fact, the scheduled service starts to lag because the operations account can't support it, and the FAA will always keep a safe system, but they may not be able to support the number of operations under reduced mode. You will also then, of course, see reduced landing fees. You won't have as many passenger facility charges coming in on the tickets. So revenues begin to go down, sales in the airport, all of those kinds of ripple effects. And the other thing is TSA is going to get hit with cuts at the same time FAA does. And of course what that means is fewer screeners, longer lines, more hassle. You have a really tough blow to the aviation system and to the airports as a result. So the airports are in trouble with this. The aviation system is in trouble with this. The uh, defense side is in trouble with this. There's hardly anybody that I could find in the country that says sequestration is a good idea, yet Congress is limping, lurching, marching toward sequestration. We're going to have a lame duck session of Congress after the election, a short, relatively short period of time, four, five, six weeks, can Congress get something done in that period to avert this crisis? We believe the pressures are going to build to the point that they are going to really be forced to take some action. One of the things that really is coming to the forefront now is the number of jobs that are going to be lost throughout the economy if, in fact, sequestration takes place. You look at the federal budget cuts across the board, and you are talking about 2.14 million jobs lost 2013. Now when Congress is staring that in the face, when the Congressional Budget Office has said this will send us back into a recession if sequestration goes into effect along with the lapse of the tax cuts that also they have to consider at the end of the year. That's a formula for disaster from a political standpoint and from the standpoint of what should be their biggest concern, which is their constituents, the folks back home. So we think that what is likely to happen is that Congress will look at the question of can they really address the fundamentals. And by that I mean what the problems are that underlie our debt and our deficit. It's not defense. Defense isn't the problem at all. It's not really the federal budget except, yes, we're going to have to rein in spending. But most importantly, we're going to have to deal with entitlements. We are going to have to deal with entitlement reform and tax reform because we've got to get our revenue and our spending in alignment.
And some of the big entitlement programs, I think everyone knows, can't sustain themselves at the level they are working right now. Those are hard things to do, Todd. So will they get it done or will they postpone the sequestration and give themselves time in the new Congress? I don't know. It's probably one or the other. AI hasn't articulated a specific policy outcome other than avoid sequestration. Is that correct? We want to see a balanced bipartisan solution. We want to see a solution that will last, and that's what we're talking about, and one that really is fair across the board. And it may include strategic cuts. We understand that, although defense has already been cut in the Budget Control Act by $487 billion. People don't understand that. The $500 billion that's coming in 13 is on top of 487. So, frankly, we feel like we have already made the major contribution that should come out of that account. But Congress is going to have to consider all of this. We at AIA don't feel that as a industry, our executives are the people who should be dictating what should happen with tax policy, what should happen with entitlement reform. That's what we elected our members of Congress to do. They're the ones who are supposed to become informed, expert, and take those things on. We want to back them in the sense that they've just got to do that quickly and on a bipartisan basis. Well, we'll see. Uh, it used to be that the easy things got done and the hard things got done eventually. Now the hard things don't get done. The easy things are pretty tough to come by as it deals with the Congress. So we'll see what happens in that lame duck session of Congress, whether they can get such a grand deal put together in such a short period of time, or is if, as you sort of hint, perhaps kick the can down the road, put off sequestration while they try to put together a package um, that looks perhaps something like the Simpson-Bowles uh, deal that con that uh, the administration looked at and Congress looked at but sort of didn't deal with a year ago. So we'll see what happens with that. In the meantime, thank you very much for coming and talking about this issue with our membership. We really appreciate it. Well, I have to say thank you to you, Todd, also, because you have been a very forceful voice. AAAE has been a very forceful voice about the problems of sequestration. And we very much appreciate it because, believe me, you're folks who get paid attention to on the Hill. So it's a good partnership. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.